Hello and welcome, this is Business Time. It's a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories that are making headlines in the country. And in the program today, we look at performance of the Malawi Stock Exchange in the first quarter of 2021. And banks' profitability continues to attract mixed reactions. We have these and other stories. Stay tuned if you could. Hello and welcome in our main story in the program today. The Malawi Stock Exchange started the year 2021 on a relatively low note, registering a drop in both uh, traded volume and value in the quarter under review. Our journalist Chimwemwe Mangazi has been following performance of the stock market and has filed this report. The report indicates that the market registered a positive return on index of 0.53% during the period under review, which is higher than the negative 3.56% return on index recorded during the corresponding period of 2020. During the period under review, there was no listing or trading on the debt market. However, the market registered a positive return on index as reflected by an upward movement of the Malawi All Share Index. Malawi Stock Exchange Chief Executive Officer John Kamanga said the decrease in positivity rate of COVID spread has brought in an element of relief to business operations in general, and this has also resulted in investor activism and confidence in the capital market. Tokuzan Saulosi is Operations Manager for Alliance Capital Stock Brokers. Uh, we can describe it as very above expectation in the first quarter because as you can see we're coming from a, uh, a period where we had a, an impact of the pandemic on the market. We expected that in the first quarter uh, the market would decrease in terms of activity and in terms of the market index. But uh, contrary to what we expected, the market has performed above average, uh, it has increased by 0.53%. Whilst in the previous uh, year, the first quarter, it decreased uh, according to expectation. Much of this has been done, uh, has been attributed mostly due to banks, trading statements from banks. You can see that the five uh, top gainers are only uh, the banking industry. And uh, despite that, there have been living decliners in the market. But these five uh, have uh, significantly uh, offset the uh, decline that has been there in share prices. So it has been above uh, our expectations. What is the outlook? We expect that in the second quarter uh, it has to continue to grow. Because now, as you can see, that most uh, companies have produced their financial statements, uh, audited financial statements, and you can see that they are more positives than negatives, uh, save for uh, the hotel industry, which has been largely affected by the pandemic. But we should expect that the market should have a positive impact in the next coming quarters. Uh, you can see that it's specific to certain companies, mostly the hospitality industry. But you can also see that there are certain uh, companies that have been affected. You can look at uh, uh, Pico, for instance. They already say, stated that uh, they have uh, clients which the pandemic has affected the business of their clients and they're failing to pay rentals. Some of them are even closing shop. Uh, it is best to invest when the prices are low and you sell when, uh, when the prices are high. So despite the pandemic, we should know that uh, the pandemic will go. And once it goes, all these companies, all these counters will have to uh, produce uh, positive results, and some of them are already producing positive results amidst the pandemic. And Noel Kazakumanja is Chief Executive Officer for Stock Brokers Malawi Limited. The market has performed well, better than last year in the same quarter. Uh, in this quarter, it has registered a positive return of 0.53%, while in the same quarter last year, it had a registered a negative return of 3.56%. So this is an improvement 
looking at the circumstances that we are, we are in. Uh, we are going through COVID pandemic, business has slowed down, so this was not expected. Uh, I'm sure it's also the performance of some of the counters. There are, there are counters that have performed so well. Uh, we talk of Airtel as an example, and we talk of the banks, uh, many of them they've done well. So the prices have responded to that performance. Well, the worrying thing is uh, uh, to do with the COVID pandemic. If uh, the situation gets better, then uh, we should expect uh, some better performance as we get to the end of the year. During the period, market capitalization increased from 1.75 trillion kwacha in January to 1.7 trillion kwacha in March. Now, 2020 would go in the history books as the year to forget for most businesses. COVID-19 affected operations of businesses in almost all sectors, of course, except for the banking sector, which remained afloat. To prove its resilience, the banking sector seemed to make more profits than the case was the previous year. Now, there have been concerns that probably banks could be uh, profiteering on exorbitant charges. Some consumers feel there's something that needs to be done to fix the error. Our journalist Gary Samadhi has been speaking with some of the consumers and the Consumers Association of Malawi Kama President John Kapido and has since filed this report. While most businesses were almost on their knees for a greater part of last year due to the COVID pandemic, banks and other financial institutions seem to operate in a different world altogether. If published results of the year ending December 31, 2021 are anything to go by, then there must be a call for honeymoon in the sector. Almost all banks have posted profit jumps of above 20 percent, a scenario already raising eyebrows among consumers. Leslie Vito says while banks might be in business for profitability, some of the charges on customers are exorbitant. To me as a customer, there's no problem with that. As long as uh, this government are providing the services, good services, good services, uh, like loans, good loans, um, services, the good services, uh, to me it's, it's okay. If there is any legal, legal uh, application, maybe government should, should audit, they should do some audits. Executive Director of the Consumers Association of Malawi is John Kavito. He insists banks make profits by exploiting customers. I think the, the issue to do with the profits is with a welcome development. Everybody would want to see these industries making money, posting good you know, profits. But it must be done in a manner that is also you know, business, you know, that makes maybe, you know, businesses. As a consumer, I would want to want, I would want to make sure that I think those people that are also doing business, they're also looking at the interests of consumers. And that when they're making business, they are moving together with the consumers. But unfortunately, what we, uh, the, 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 the actual, you know, you know, topic that you're raising now regarding the banks is coming at a time when we know that the whole economy is on the, huge stress. And also coming at a time when we have COVID-19, where most of the industries are now collapsing, cannot even perform, uh, where consumers do not have even access to incomes, where consumers do not have even jobs right now. Now you see one sector of the economy, like the financial sector, making huge profits like those. Then you wonder, where is this money coming from? Because then you are talking about those industries who they borrow money to, who, those consumers who they borrow money to, they are all faded, they are, they are all dead. But only one person who borrows the money is the only one standing tall and doing business as usual and making money. So the question that we are trying to raise now is, if indeed it is true that they are making such huge profits, why is that only happening with the commercial banks? When you look at the uh, borrowing pattern that Malawians have, the industries, they have milked out. They, their blood has been drained out. 
because they borrow from the banks. The consumers borrow from the banks. Therefore, that has really affected the overall performance of the economy. The economy is completely down now. Then the question that I think we are raising now is, why are these banks posting these huge profits? Where are, get, where are they getting these you know, profits from? It could be that they are continuing siphoning or killing the industry according, you know, due, due to in high interest rates. They have now sacked the consumer to a point where the consumer has got nothing left. However, the industry attributes its profitability status to innovation. Bankers Association of Malawi Chief Executive Officer Linus Kungula says banks impact on product diversification, factors that have contributed to financial institutions keeping afloat in turbulent times. There has been advocacy to have interest rates capped as a way of protecting consumers in recent pasts. Remember, this is Business Time, a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories that are making headlines in the country. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Business Time, a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories that are making headlines in the country. Moving on with the program. About two weeks ago, the Ministry of Agriculture announced farm gate prices for various commodities in the country. Maize, for instance, has been set at a minimum price of 150 kwacha per kilogram. However, this has attracted mixed reactions from various stakeholders and farmers say they were not consulted. Now, what is at stake? This is a question our journalist attempts in this report. Agriculture Minister Robin Lowe announced that government has set minimum price of maize at 150 kwacha per kilogram, shelled groundnuts at 480 kwacha per kg, polished rice at 600 kwacha per kg, 320 kwacha per kg for soya beans and cotton, while 510 kwacha per kg for pure beans, paprika at 850 kwacha per kg, and chilies at 770 kwacha per kg. Commenting on the prices, Legumes Development Trust Programs Coordinator Sangwani Makoko said much as they are contented with the prices of some crops, some prices need to be revised. She said ground nuts and pigeon peas, for example, they feel that government could have done better because for ground nuts, the association does not know what determined its prices because there has been a rise in prices on unshelled, but the price for shelled remains the same, yet shelled ground nuts is the one which has a lot of efforts that goes into it. The president of the Cotton Farmers Association, Dixon Gundani, shares the same sentiments that cotton prices are lower and not befitting the investment that goes into the production. He says that last year's prices were higher than this year's, but they still sold at lower prices than the minimum price set by government, which means that this year it will be worse. The association has since called for an audience with the minister to present its members' grievances on the prices. Grain Traders and Processors Association of Malawi Chairperson Grace Mohango believes many associations, including themselves, were not consulted because the prices do not reflect what is on the ground. Mohango said government should consult every stakeholder again because for some of the prices, such as soya beans, they have killed their markets internationally and even for maize, farmers will not benefit compared to last year. Ministry of Agriculture spokesperson Gresham Lungu says the prices came after a wider consultation. Whenever we would like to set up the farm gate prices, we invite the stakeholders, but uh, we do not invite everyone. What we do is that we just uh, invite the representatives from each and every category. If you are looking at the farmers, we do get the representation from uh, as the union of Malawi. At the same time, for looking at uh, the Kodwani farmers, we also invited them through their president. He attended the consultations. If you look at uh, these other stakeholders, the civil society organizations, they were represented by their leadership. So it's like we do not get anyone. What we do is just to get the representation of those people. And since now these people, they do have 
for some meetings, they agree there that uh, our price is this one. They make propositions. But when the propositions come on the table where we are now deciding on what the price, what the price should be, yeah, that's when now we look at uh, all the factors, uh, like if it's a farmer, how much is the farmer uh, 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 using to produce like one kilogram of maize, if it's about corn, if it's about uh, soya beans. So we look at those factors, then we consider the uh, market, uh, the prices on the market. If you look at maize, uh, what was the previous uh, price in the previous years? And what about uh, 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 cotton? What were the prices in the uh, previous years? And what about on the international market? What are the prices? If you look at the, the uh, factors, uh, we say that like, uh, on the market, what are the prices on the market? So that we can also factor in all these uh, uh, factors. He adds that government, through the Ministry of Agriculture, is still consulting different stakeholders on the issue. He warned that they are working with different security agents to bring to book anyone who will be duping farmers. We have engaged the uh, Malai police and uh, we have even started some sterilization campaigns uh, to make sure that uh, the church leaders look at the political leaders, even the chiefs themselves in the villages, they uh, have to be aware of what government wants to do in regards to uh, enforcement of the farm gate prices. So we'll still work hand in hand with these other stakeholders to make sure that uh, those who are buying in the rural areas, they are having the licenses. The licenses is something that will compel them to make sure that uh, they are complying with the uh, set, uh, set farm gate prices. If they see the farmers themselves see that uh, someone is buying at a low price as compared to the farm gate price, they have to report to the police. They have to report to the uh, ch uh, traditional readers, even to ask the ministry, so that we can go uh, and check and uh, even get uh, uh, confiscate the licenses which they are, we have given them. So this is what we are trying to do. At the same time, we want to empower the youth, even the locals, that whoever is buying in the typical villages should at least make sure that uh, he gets a license from us. No big companies should go in the villages to buy, but these small scale business operators should be the ones to buy in the rural areas. Then they should sell some deals with the big companies in towns that they should have to uh, sell their produce to these uh, big uh, companies in town. President Lazarus Chaguera announced that Agricultural Development and Marketing Corporation, ADMAC, has been equipped to effectively buy from farmers. Now, moving on with the program and in other business news. Crafting of a proposed bill aimed at bringing sanity in the human resources management profession is at an advanced stage. This is according to Godwin Ngoma, who is president of the Institute of People Management in Malawi. He caught up with our journalist Justin Mkwewu in this interview. That is one of our key objectives as the Institute of People Management in Malawi. Uh, basically, is to professionalize our professional and be well recognized as a professional. So we are indeed pushing for the enactment of a bill um, for human resources in Malawi. Uh, currently, we have done a lot of strides. It has indeed moved. We are at a level where now the bill is being taken to the committee for uh, principal secretaries. And that is close to the end of um, it being passed because when it goes to the committee of uh, principal secretaries, the next thing is they take it to the committee of um, the cabinet committee on labor affairs. And uh, after it passes that, then it goes to the full cabinet, and then later on it now pass, goes into parliament where they debate upon and remove it. But indeed, it is a key issue that we have at hand. What gap is this uh, uh, bill, if it materializes, going to fill? Uh, in the uh, human resource profession in Malawi? Uh, it is going to be a very key, uh, key thing. Actually, to us, we call it a, a major groundbreaking issue. Uh, because you, once this has been passed, uh, it becomes a law that he, every professional who is doing, who is practicing HR needs to have the right qualification not to be recognized. Uh, so what will happen is that he, each and every institution the human resource part will be handled by people who really know 
what the HR is, and they will be bringing in a, the right thing that is supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. You and me will agree that we've got a lot of organizations that are running in the in Malawi here, a lot of companies, uh, be it small or big, but uh, you see that uh, most of the people who are practicing HR are not uh, HR professionals, and hence we have a lot of issues, a lot of problems that are coming in in how HR is uh, managed, so how employees are managing their work. <laughs> now, uh, as you have said, that there are a lot of issues surrounding how employees are managed, and one of the things that mostly come out is the uh, people, uh, HR, uh, because they mostly we believe that HR people, they do high and fire. So now they, they tend, most, uh, most of the issues that we hear of misconducts are that they tend to abuse their powers uh, 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 towards, for example, sexual harassment and everything else. But do you feel that this bill is going to fill uh, those uh, things that we hear on uh, almost each and every day? Yes, definitely. Uh, some of the things you hear are hearsay, are they generalized, and they're not there. But indeed, issues are there, and uh, we, as the professionals in HR, we cannot run away from that, but to accept that indeed there are issues. But we are saying these issues are happening because uh, these people are not controlled. Uh, we've got no real control to um, control them or to discipline them, because some of them are called HR, but they don't know HR and they are not our members. So when a thing happens, the voice that comes out is an HR practitioner. And once you say an HR practitioner, it's an HR which is affected. And that's why as an institution we say, no, 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 let's have an institution that has got a bill, has got a law uh, uh, guiding it, therefore that anyone who can do wrong can be challenged and can be rightfully uh, disciplined. Well, that interview also brings us to the end of today's edition of the program Business Time. It's a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories that are making headlines in the country on behalf of the entire production team. My name is William Kumwembe. Always remember, if it doesn't make money, then it doesn't make sense. Goodbye for now and stay safe.